by fans of high quality entertainment. I just found this article. It was written, I guess, about two months ago. It's by Steve Poitras, and he has chosen his 20 worst Beatles songs. And I thought I would, I did see the first, I think, three. And he, he has a, uh, you know, a little comment about each of the songs he's chosen. And so I usually don't read those, but they're fairly short. So I just might read what he says about each of these songs. And I'd love your thoughts on the songs he has chosen. So here we go. So first he has Love Me Do. It's the song that, oh, I have to read this too. The 20 Worst Beatles Songs. The Beatles recorded more than 300 songs over the course of their career, despite some of them being absolute gems. Some of them. Others can make your skin crawl. Not me. Here's our rundown. No, here's your rundown. Here's our rundown of the 20 Worst Songs by the Fab Four in chronological order. So first he has Love Me Do. It's the song that introduced the Beatles to the world, their first hit, their first song that left a mark. But it makes us wonder, hadn't anyone heard a song before 1962? That doesn't really make any sense. Excessively simple. Yeah. Love Me Do is the rock and roll equivalent of low-fat vanilla yogurt. Hmm, that sounds good. <laughs> it's hard to understand why England went so crazy for so little. Was the pre-internet world that boring? I think it's, you know, of course it's a simple song, but it was the start, you know, of the Beatles recording career. I, are they so, supposed to start with a day in the life? <laughs> I think it's a lovely song. I need you, George Harrison. Lots of people say over and over, hearts filled with boundless admiration, that the Four Tops could record three LPs in a single afternoon. Yeah, they were that talented. Oh, they were quick, those Beatles, but sometimes it seemed they were a bit rushed. And in the case of I Need You, it shows. Doesn't show for me. Why did you leave that out-of-time crazy guitar in the mix? Didn't want to bother with a second take. I don't remember any out of time crazy guitar in the mix i think that's a you know george harrison was slow at starting to write songs unlike lennon and mccartney but he grew into a fantastic songwriter and i think i need you is a nice song honey don't yeah that gets it's usually in a lot of top 10 worst lists Let's be honest, Ringo's song is usually an unfortunate moment to skip over on a Beatles help. But what were they to do? Ringo had to be featured somehow to help the poor teenage girl who couldn't figure out which Beatle was her favorite. They say it's not always the drummer's fault. On Honey Don't, Ringo really did everything he could. He put tons of energy into trying to hide the fact that the rest of the group is on autopilot, but in vain. In fact... If you take a close listen to the left side of the stereo mix, you can hear George Harrison thinking of something else during his solo. It's silly. It's not my favorite Beatles song, but it's it's not bad. Run for Your Life. I know John Lennon didn't like the song because of the subject matter, but just the song itself, I like. I don't necessarily like the lyrics, but... Well, I'd rather see you dead, little girl, than to be with another man. You better keep your head, little girl, or you won't know where I am. Look out, girls, because John Lennon would rather see you dead than with another man. Dead. Whatever happened to all you need is love. That was later on. <laughs> uh, in his defense, Lennon publicly declared this song his least favorite Beatles song. But I like the song, not the lyrics. Tax man? Steve, we have to talk. 
after drying his tears in a silk handkerchief given to him by one of his 15 butlers, Serge George wrote a song about the pain and anger he feels about having to pay taxes. Life ain't easy, my friend. Well, he had a good right to complain about taxes because the Beatles, because of the money they were making, they were in this higher tax bracket and they had to pay, I don't know what it was, 90% or 95% on their on their income, which is ridiculous. So he, he had a right to complain. And it's a great song. I need a drink. I shouldn't be drinking so early in the morning, but at least it's orange juice. And if you're still watching, please remember to like the video and subscribe and leave a comment after you watch the whole video below and tell me what you think of his choices. Yellow Submarine, another easy target. Paul wanted to write a kid's song, why not? Good for him, it's his right. But if it's a kid's song, why do I hear it so often during my adult life? Because it's very popular. And John Lennon had, you know, as we found out from the revolve revolver outtakes, John kind of had a hand in it too. Although I guess Paul is the one that came up with the yellow submarine idea. I think. You just got to shake your head. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Lucy in the sky with diamonds or LSD for short. Oh my God, that's LSD, the drug. It wasn't, supposedly it wasn't intentional to read it. You know, I don't know. But, but we all know the story of Julian's painting. It's special, it's original, original, but who voluntarily plays this song saying, this is my jam? Nobody. You take drugs, John. Fine, we get it. I don't think he knows the origins of that song. It's a great song. Another one that gets kind of bashed, being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. Mr. Kite, with its lyrics drawn almost entirely from an old carnival poster, that's right, represents the moment when John Lennon officially stopped trying. I guess he wasn't trying later on with Strawberry Fields Forever, A Day in the Life, Dear Prudence. Uh, <laughs> a few songs later on the same album, he sang Good Morning, Good Morning after hearing the lyrics in a serial commercial. That's what happens when you're a songwriter. You're influenced by day-to-day -day things. In the big book of detestable things, circus music comes just after circus clowns. Even the Beatles can't change that. This, this guy's getting me mad. Of course, no big surprise. He, he wouldn't like Hey Jude. <sighs> According to researchers, there are two types of people. Those who like to hang out with their friends and enjoy life. And those who like to listen to the last five hours of the incredibly long Hey Jude. Na, 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 hey, 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 goodbye. I don't think it's five hours long. And I do know that some Beatles fans think it is, they stretch it out too long at the end, but I love it. And I know millions of other Beatles fans do too. And it's great in concert, so. <sighs> I'm getting in a bad mood. Wild honey pie. Yeah. The best way to fill a double album is to include all kinds of stuff that nobody really needs to hear. I need to hear it. The effect is subtle. If you decide to put wild honey pie on your album, you don't have any excuses to tell Ringo that Don't Pass Me By isn't very good. I love both songs. A bad song here is not a bad song. A bad song there and presto, you've got your double album. Yeah, double album filled with great songs. I love Wild Honey Pie. I understand some people don't. That's fine. But Paul always liked being experimental and doing some crazy stuff, and I enjoy it. <laughs> Mr. Moonlight. Yeah. 
hey, did grandma just take off my Beatles album and put one of hers on? What's happening here? Oh, wait, it's just John Lennon trying to be a questionable crooner with Paul doing a questionable organ solo on a questionable song. The only thing I agree with is the organ solo. It's kind of cheesy, but I don't know if it's if they did it on purpose or not. And John Lennon's vocals are excellent. So he's wrong again. Yeah, don't pass me by. Some people might be surprised that Octopus's Garden didn't make this list. I'm not. It's a great song. Ringo only recorded two compositions with the Beatles and compared to Don't Pass Me By, Octopus is like Mozart. It took Ringo four years to convince the group to record his song. He must have just been begging them. It only made it onto the White Album because the standards were so low by the time that it didn't matter. He may, he may as well do it. Uh, yeah, silly. I love the song. I mean, I... When I was younger, it wasn't one of my favorite songs, but I have a new appreciation for it in the past few years. Way to go, Ringo. Another song I like, you know, I love these silly songs by Paul. I understand some people don't. In his book, A Hard Day's Right, journalist Steve Turner reports that Paul got the idea for the song when he was in India when he saw two monkeys having sex in front of everyone. It's scientifically proven that no good story can start this way. I don't know. It doesn't even make sense. He's not even really talking about the song itself. Inspiration can come to a songwriter by having two monkeys having sex on a road. This is a big shocker. <laughs> Elton John has Jamaica off, and the Beatles have Obladi Oblada, by far the whitest Jamaican ska you can find. At least Paul McCartney didn't insist on using an accent when he sang it. Can you imagine listening to this song for 42 hours straight? No, I couldn't imagine listening to uh, any song for 42 hours straight. I'd hate it. The Beatles' loyal en recording engineer, Jeff Emmerich, had to, and he quit his job immediately afterwards. Is it because of that song? I've never heard. I know he did quit. Uh... The, the sessions, but is it because of Obla Di Obla Da? Let me know in the comment section below. It's a fun song. I like it. Revolution 9. I could use coherent sentences. It's about time to explain why this eight minute sonic mosaic is untenable. But untenable? Why should. What? But why should I? John Lennon sure didn't. Syn synopsis. Masker. I can't even read those words. Stupid. Doesn't even make any sense. Like, is that a song review? Um, I am, once again, I can see people not liking this song or track. Um. Uh, but I remember, you know, when I was 10 years old, hearing the White Album for the first time and hearing this track or song, and I said to myself, that's hard to dance to. No, it was scary and it was weird. And I liked it because it was so different. That's the Beatles for you, doing everything. We're almost at the end here. Thank God. Oh, poor George, another great song. The soundtrack to Yellow Submarine already, already isn't the Beatles' finest moment. So imagine a song that's been included just to fill time so that they aren't selling an album that's too short. Sticking to his habit of never being satisfied with a situation and, yeah, that's George. Like, don't bother me. <laughs> and talking to us like we care. 
George Harrison offers up a song about the fact that he isn't happy with his editor, Northern Songs. Good for him. And the way it retained the copyright for the songs it published. Way to go, George Harrison. I love the song. Not my favorite Beatles song, but it's certainly not the worst. The day when producer Phil Spector recorded the orchestra and choir to accompany this saccharine piece is the day that subtlety officially died. But Paul McCartney had nothing to do with Phil Spector's orchestra orchestration. Try saying that when you're drinking orange juice. But I like it, you know, I know Paul didn't. It's a song that cries at the top of its lungs. There, do you feel emotional now? Yeah, it's a very sweet song. Like I said, not my favorite, but it does its job. Yeah. Oh, my. Yoko Ono broke up the Beatles. Fine. Yeah. But we're pretty sure that having to work on a song like Maxwell's Silver Hammer for days on end is more likely to make you want to quit the band. Even the ever happy Peace and Love Ringo couldn't handle it. The worst session ever was Maxwell's Silver Hammer. It's the worst track we ever had to record. It went on for effing weeks. And then there's the synthesizer solo. Good thing the Beatles broke up before the 1970s really got rolling. I like the song and the dark humor. I think there's one more, maybe. A Sun King. Oh, Lord. The B-side of Abbey Road was pretty much perfect. It was perfect. But while we're electrified by the incredible, you never give me your money, as soon as it ends, Sun King begins. Even before the group starts singing, we're lulled into a deep sleep from which we won't wake until we hear the first notes of Mean Mr. Mustard and lying, lying, and lying, swear, no, no, I wasn't sleeping, I was just resting my eyes. And then, you know, John Lennon would always, not always, but quite often put down his songs, and he can be wrong, you know. Final one. Free as a bird. Ugh. To promote their anthology, the three remaining Beatles exhumed John Lennon's cadaver in the form of a poorly recorded demo. The result is a sleepy song, which could probably put Lennon back into his... That's just nasty. An idiot. Yeah, some people like real love more. I thought Free as a Bird was excellent. You know, they did the best they could, and I enjoy the song. So that's it. I would love your thoughts about his uh, 20 worst Beatles song in the comment section below. I don't know why I do that. I've been doing it for years. Thanks for watching. I apologize. I apologize for this 20 worst Beatles song list.